this church and that church and they deceive you. You see? Because nowadays, people, people's hearts, you don't know where their hearts is. The Bible says the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can really know people today? Can you really know a person today? People are so, there's so many sides to people. People are, can be so, like you can never uncover who they are. They can be so deep. When I say deep, meaning like once you know, once you think you found that the you found who the person is, then there's something else. You see, because people, the Bible says the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? So our faith is not in the men of God here, in the men of God there. My faith is not in the men of God here, in the church here, in the church there. My faith is not there at all. My faith is not in no men of God and in no church. My faith is in Jesus. It's in what is written, the Bible. Because in the end, I know that's what's going to take me to heaven. So that's what I'm talking to you about. I'm talking to you about what is being said in the Bible. What is being said in the Bible. And you could read it here. When you read about adultery, uh, here, Matthew chapter 5, you, Jesus said, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is, not more, for it is more profitable for, that, for, for you that one of your members perish. Then for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. When you read the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 tells, says that do not be misled. Do not be deceived. No, homo, no adulterer, no homosexual offender, no, uh, 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 no drunkard will inherit the kingdom of God. It gives you a list of different kinds of sin, different kinds of things that people are doing that if they don't come out, they will not enter heaven. So one of those things is adultery. So I preach that here in this channel because I know right now we are living in, in a day and age that adultery has become very prevalent. That's something that you see all over the place now. I think it's been there. It has been there. But the days and age that we are living now has gotten worse, has gotten more evil. People have gotten more evil and more wicked now. You have TV now. You have uh, you have movies. You have all these things, you know. And then you you got people that are not giving that are not being good role models. People are are now their role models now. The people that they're following also are not being good role models in that area. You see. So what you have you have a lot of adultery, divorce, all these things going on. And yet those things are what's taking people to hell. Adultery takes people to hell. You see, so if a man cares about his life, if a man cares about his soul, if a woman cares about his life, if a woman cares about her soul, she will stay away from adultery. If she loves, if she understands that Jesus is love, she will stay away from adultery. If he understands that Jesus is love, that God is love, he will stay away from that thing. See, this is the thing. Today, <coughs> this is what we have going on today. In the church, like maybe outside of the church too. But this, this is what we have going on. Outside of the church or whatever, out there. You have people keep talking about, oh, oh, Jesus is love. They keep saying Jesus is love. Yes, it's true. And that's what I'm preaching here. I'm preaching love. Jesus is love. You see? But then, when you come and show them these things... That shows that, hey, you cannot do these things. If you say, if you say you have love, you cannot do those things. And then when you, sh when you show them these things, then they don't want to receive it. You see? Then they reject it. And yet, they're the same person to come to you and say, hey, you're supposed to love. Yes, we're supposed to love our neighbors ourselves. That's what the Bible say. But when you love your neighbors yourself, when you love your wife, will you commit adultery? When you love your husband, will you commit adultery? No. As a matter of fact, when Jesus comes to your life, you will make sure that you don't go that way. Or, 
you will repent from that life. Repent from that lifestyle because it's not love at all. It's not love at all. See, it's against God. God, the reason, see, Jesus came because he wanted to teach us love. That's the reason he came. That's why when they were abusing him, he did not curse nobody back like we do today. Today, you curse, somebody curse somebody out. If This is how it is today. To show you that we don't have love in this world. We preach it, but we don't really have it. In this world, this is how it is in this world today. In this world, it's safe. One person curse somebody, right? Or one person say something mean to somebody. Normally, what you see is, is, is retaliation. Retaliation means like, if this guy don't show you love, then this, if this person don't show us love, then what happens is we also don't show love. That's how it is. You see? We don't, we don't show the love of God at all. You know? So, so, and, and so when Jesus came, that's not what he did. Jesus didn't, didn't do that. Jesus, when he came, when people don't love him, he loved them back. He loved them. He loved them regardless. He loved, he showed us to teach us to love our enemies. You see? Because the truth is, the enemy is not us. It's not human beings. The Bible tells you who the enemy is. It's a spirit called Satan and his kingdom. And the people working with him in his kingdom, his, those spirits. You see? That's the real enemy. So Jesus came to, to, get, to show us, okay, love. This is, this is how you love. So all these things that you see in the Bible tell you not to do, not to do. It's because they're not love. When the Bible tells you, don't commit adultery. Because it's not love to commit adultery. When the Bible tells you, okay, to do this. Whatever it's telling you to do, it's because it's love. That's the reason. It's something good that you're doing for your neighbor. So it's telling you to do good. Because when you do something good for your neighbor, that is love. It could be any simple act. It doesn't have to be a big thing. Nowadays, if you don't do a big thing, nobody thinks it's nothing. You don't have to do a, a big, huge thing. It could be just anything small. It could be just giving somebody a simple, a simple, a, a simple a, a dollar or something. Sharing your food with somebody. It could be any small thing. See? To show you that, hey, to, to, to show the person that you cons you're considering them. That you're thinking about them. It could be anything small. It doesn't have to be anything big. See, it doesn't have to be a huge thing. It doesn't have to be you come out with a billion dollars, a million dollars out of your pocket to give to the person to prove it. No. You know, you might not have that million dollars to give. You know, but whatever you have, you give it. You know, just to show the love that you have for that person, the love that you have for your fellow man. You know, love can also be you don't want to see other people suffer. That's also love. So out of that, you help them. When you see them suffering, you help them. That's love too. So when people in adultery, when people are coming in adultery, they're making the other partner suffer. You see? They're out there doing their, doing their sin, and yet the partner, the partner's suffering. That's why it's not love. You understand? It's not love at all. So I push that because I know this thing is going on. This thing they call adultery, that's going on today. Probably even in the church. It's going on outside the church, I know. But this thing is, is, is a problem. And it's taking, a, this thing takes people to hell. And that's another way men shows a people that they don't love them, that they don't have love. You see? And the Bible tells us we, we, to repent. Repent means change our ways. Change. We cannot be the same. We cannot continue to live the same way and think that it's going to end well with us. No. If we don't follow God's way, we're going to hell, I'm telling you. If we choose to, do, to live life the way we think is the right way, and we, we, we completely ignore the word of God, which is the Bible, we are not going to heaven. We are going to go to hell. We're going to go and burn in hell fire for all eternity. You see? And by that time, it will be too late. Because there is no repentance in hell. We cannot ask God for a second chance in hell when it's already too late. It's while we're here on this earth that we got to make things right. You see? That's the right thing. A lot of times also, this is the other problem. The other problem that we have as human beings, that's, that's why we struggle, we fight all the time, is because 
Because we always look at our own self and we don't look at the other person. You see? Or sometimes we judge. We do that a lot. We judge. You know? That's why we have to keep looking. We have to keep checking ourselves to make sure that we 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 doing what is what is right. Because we're human beings. We have weaknesses. We have frailties. We have sin. We have shortcomings. We have sin that wants to uh, uh, come out. You know, and 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 make us do what is wrong. So we have to be careful. You know. So in this life, because in the end, all these things will be will be will will give an account to this life that we live here. So the, the other problem, again, like I said, that manifests itself, that makes men fight men all the time, argue all the time, and never find a way to compromise or a way to negotiate or a way to have peace amongst themselves is because most of the time they're looking at what the other person is doing, you know, that is wrong, but they never look at their own self. To see what they're doing wrong. They never considered that they could be wrong also. You see? That's a problem. When you're dealing with a person like that. A person that can only see the wrong that you're doing. But they can never sit down and wonder. You know, and say, well, what about me? Is there something that I did wrong to this person? If this person... If this, is there any chance that I did anything wrong at all? If you don't have... If we cannot sit down and do that. If you have people, people that cannot sit down and do that, you will have a hard time compromising with that person. You will have a hard time having peace with that person. Because, because for the simple fact is that human beings, we human beings, meaning that we can all sin, we can all make mistakes, we can all say the wrong things, we can all do the wrong things, you know? It cannot be that everything we do is right. How can it be? Are we Jesus? No. Are we God? No. How can it be everything we do is right? How can we be, it be everything we say is right? How can it be that we never make no mistakes? It's not possible. So if we think that way, then we are deceived. We're deceiving ourselves. We, we prideful. We boastful. We arrogant when we think like that. People that think like that is too arrogant. We need to come out of arrogance and live arrogance if we want to worship Jesus correct. If we want to have peace in our homes, in our houses, peace between each other, we have to understand that we're not perfect. Just the same way we can quickly insult other people and be like, oh, start judging them and start saying, hey, you're not doing this right, this, this, this. We have to look at ourselves also. We have to look at ourselves also and see, is there anything that we're doing that's not right? I, for one, I know I don't do everything right. So I'm guilty already. I know I don't do everything right. I know I make mistakes. I know I do things that's not right. You see, I know that. You see, but I also know that that uh, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord uh, will help me. I'm counting on the Lord to help me. You know, and there's and then I'm counting on the Lord to help me. And that's another reason for prayer, for why I pray for the Lord to help me in my weaknesses, because I have weaknesses. Just like everybody else. We all have weaknesses. I'm not a perfect preacher. Nobody's perfect. If somebody put, uh, 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 prepared themselves to be a perfect person, they're lying. If a preacher come on a mic and, and preach and, and people think that they're perfect, it's a lie. There's nobody that's perfect. Nobody that's perfect. Nobody. See? Nobody that's perfect. So what I'm, gonna, what I'm saying is that this is what can help us. You know, even in a relationship, when you're in a relationship, you're dealing with people, you know, in a relationship, that helps you with your marriages also, not just marriage, but relationship in general. Always remember that. Don't just look at the other person on what they're doing that is wrong. You know, don't only look at that because remember, it's not only them that do wrong, but also we also do wrong. None of us is perfect. Remember that. So, because that's what happened. That's what make people cannot get along. Because they don't get along. People don't get along in marriages, relationships. Why? Because they don't get along. Because half the time they're judging. That's the reason. Very judgmental. Being judgmental hurt people a lot in relationship. Because they always see what you're doing wrong. And the devil's there 
helping them to see and everything that you do wrong. Because the Bible tells you the devil is the accuser of the brethren. You know, what to you who live on this earth? Because the devil has been sent down, has come down to you. You know, the accuser of the brethren. So whenever you see people all the time accusing you of this, accusing you of that, that's a problem. Especially in relationships. That's a big problem. When I say big problem, it's meaning like you have to know how to maneuver your way. <laughs> you have to know how to deal with that. So that's what I'm giving you today. I'm giving you wisdom, knowledge that God has given me by his grace, which I'm sharing with you. So what I'm telling you, the way out of that is you have to understand. Don't be that way. Don't be the person that keeps seeing wrong in other people. That keeps seeing, oh, this person do this, this person do that. Don't be like that. Don't be judgmental like that. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us not to judge. That's not going to lead us nowhere. That's not going to take us nowhere. That's not going to take no relationship nowhere. It's not going to help no relationship. It's not going to help us. As a matter of fact, it's a problem. <laughs> so instead of being like that, what we do is when, when somebody come, what we're supposed to do is when you have two smart people in a relationship, two wise people in a relationship, this is what they do. They can, even though they can see themselves also, they can see the wrong they're doing. Not only see the wrong that you're doing or the wrong that I'm doing, but they also see the wrong that they're doing also. And when you have somebody like that, there's always room for what? That you can always have a, a, a conversation. In other words, there's always, you can always work it out. There's always going to, peace can always enter a home where, where, both people can see their own faults. Not only see the other person's fault. Because that's what causes problems anyway in the first place. Is that this person is accusing that person of this. And that other person is accusing this person of this. And none of them is, is, is guilty of anything. None of them claim to be guilty of anything. None of them can say, oh, well, I did this wrong. You're right, I did this wrong. No. Nobody wants to swallow their pride. They want to look at the other man's fault. And not their own fault. You know, that's not the way of God. The way of God is we, before we even judge somebody else, we judge ourselves first. We look at our, ourselves first. That's the words of Jesus. And the Bible tells you before you go to somebody and say, remove this sin from your eye. The very first thing we do, we go to our own eyes first and make sure that we don't have anything that we're doing wrong. We make sure that we are clear first before we can go to the other person and be like, oh, sister, brother, you need to do this. See, we don't do that, you know, or enough. That's why people fight all the time, because they fight all the time because they always see the other person's fault, but never see their own fault. So that's what we got to do. We got to look at our own selves, because remember what I told you, we all sinner. We all fall short of God's glory. None of us is perfect. So if none of us is perfect, how can it be that the other person is always doing wrong, but we're never doing no wrong? And none of us is perfect. Does that make any sense? It must be that it's Satan that's making us think that way so that there can always be argument, you know? Because whenever uh, uh, whenever you have two people and both of them is humble enough to not only to also look at themselves, then there's always room for peace. There's always going to be peace because, because this person not only see, he can see what you're doing wrong, but, but he also see what he's doing wrong. That way we can talk. That way people, there's, there's a conversation. But when you have somebody only see what you're doing is wrong, never see themselves doing anything wrong at all, can never admit to any wrong, then you have a problem. You have a person that needs, that needs humility, that doesn't have humility. You know? So that person needs to receive Jesus. That person needs to receive the word of God. You know? And let us go to that word if I can find it. You see, that's what the Bible tells us. Before we accuse, before we quit to, to accuse people, you know, we have to look at ourselves first. As a matter of fact, we're not even supposed to accuse nobody. You know, that's not our job. We're not the judge, you know. So, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure none of us is perfect. It doesn't matter how well, how good we think we are. None of us is perfect. I don't care who we are. None of us is perfect. We've all did something, you know. We've all done something. Even when we try and we make a mistake sometimes, you know. So none of us is perfect. So we have to understand that we have to be uh, patient with people. We have to understand that people can make mistakes, but at the same time, you know, we have to be forgiving when they do it. We have to forgive them. Forgive them and move on. 
you know that way everything can continue to, to be okay you see otherwise we're gonna be in trouble you know Satan has a way that he calls people to be in arguments and fight all the time because we're not using wisdom we gotta use wisdom in relationship marriages uh, relationship with people in this life we gotta use wisdom because it's when you use wisdom that things go right but the moment we don't use wisdom we start having problems a lot of times problems happen because somebody's not using wisdom you know we gotta use wisdom when we're dealing with people wisdom you see wisdom so that's the that's wisdom what I'm telling what I'm saying today is that is that you know when you're dealing with people you know when you're dealing with people you know don't only look at what they're doing that is wrong always remember we also have done wrong we're not perfect also you know that way we can be more that will make us be more forgiving you see more forgiving that's why God says um before God says for us to forgive other people if we want God to forgive us we have to forgive others why because we also we also sinner we also sinner that's why God says for us to forgive other people Jesus himself says that he says for us to forgive people their sin if we want God to forgive us our sin, we must forgive other people their sin, the things that they do. Why? Because we ourselves also sin too. That's the reason. Because we also sin. We also sin too. You see, we also sin too. You know, so God wants us to forgive people also. Forgive people when they do things, you know, because, because not only do they do things, but we also do things too. We need God's forgiveness also, just like they do. So we have to forgive them if we want God to forgive us. Because, because we're not any better. That's what God is saying. We're not better than this one. This one is not better. No, this, it's, not, it's no such thing. It's not about, you know, who's this, who's that. No, it's about we all, we all human beings. We're all sinners. We all need God's forgiveness. You see? So, um, uh, but anyhow, today's message was about the storm. That when the storm comes... It really shows you who you are, you know, situations, family situations, relationships, different situations when they come, they really expose you and show you where you stand, where your faith is like if you're really practicing Jesus. It really can expose you as a person, as a man of God, as a Christian, you know, and that's a good thing because it comes to, to show us who we really are, you see, and then that's, a, that's the door for us to be strengthened and be built up. By the Lord, so, so um, yeah, so that's that's yeah, that's faith. Faith is faith is uh, uh, faith is is keeping the word of God, you know, through the storm, whatever's going on, you continue to hold on to to the scripture, you know, you don't whatever you see the other person doing, you don't do the same thing. If you know it's wrong what they're doing, you don't do it because they're doing it, you know. We're not here following men. We don't follow men. Christianity is not about really following people. You see? So, because sometimes, what if they're doing wrong? Are you going to say, well, my pastor did it, so I'm going to do it? You know? Are you going to say, well, my pastor did it? Well, my pastor says this, this, this. My question is going to be, okay, did the Bible say that? Did, did Jesus say that? The, the, uh, we are the followers of Jesus, the disciples of Jesus. You know? That's who died for our sins. That's who paid the price for our sins so we can receive forgiveness for our sins. You see? That's why I don't I don't pray to no Mary. You know, I don't pray to to no man, no man of God. I don't you know, I don't I don't I don't go to them for 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 uh for salvation. No. Because they never died for my sins. You know, they didn't pay the price for my sins. They're not God. You know? So, you know, and they're not the way to heaven. So the way to heaven is Jesus himself, you know, Jesus himself. So that's who we got to make sure that we are following. As an, Our example is not people. You know, we cannot say, oh, well, um, this church did it. These Christians did it. So that means it must be okay. You know, well, Bridge did it. So, you know, it must be okay. Who is Bridge? Who am I? You know? Am I Jesus? No. You know, am I God? No. So who are you going to follow? Me? No. You follow Jesus. 
That's who you follow. You follow Jesus. You know, we don't follow men of God. We follow Jesus because even the men of God is a man. You know, he can fall. So if they fall, are you going to follow them? In the ditch, when they fall into a ditch, you're gonna go in the ditch with them. If they fall into sin, you're gonna take after you're gonna take the example that, that they give you. You know, sometimes they, they will teach wrong doctrine. Are you gonna follow the doctrine if it's not Bible, if it's not the biblical uh, 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 doctrines of the Bible? You see, no, see, in the end, in the end, you have to know who your master is. Know who your master is, you know. Your master is God Almighty, Jesus Christ. That's who the master is. That's who the teacher is, the real teacher. Yes, he called people, people to be teachers, but the real actual teacher is Jesus himself. That's the real shepherd. Yes, he calls shepherd in the church, but the real shepherd is Jesus Christ. The Bible tells you the true shepherd is the good shepherd. That's the one you can count on. You know, with your life, you can you can put your life on Jesus, because he put he, he died for us. He he gave his life for us. Without Jesus, there's no heaven for us. There's no heaven, because our sins must be paid for for us to enter heaven. You see, and Jesus, this is what he told us in the Bible. He says, "Not everyone that say unto me." In other words, not everyone that says to Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord Jesus, your Lord. Not everyone that say unto Jesus, Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. He says, but it's the one that do the will of my Father in heaven. In other words, the one that obey the word of God. That's the one that enter, uh, uh, enter heaven. So that means every man for themselves. That's what it means. That means you cannot enter heaven through oh. A church membership. Oh, I'm with I'm with this church, so therefore I'm going to heaven. I'm with this I'm with this man of God. Therefore, my heaven is guaranteed. You, you know, there, I'm, I've been in church for so many years. I've been a Christian for 55 years. Therefore, I know I'm going to heaven. No, that's not what the Bible say. That takes you to heaven. The Bible is clear on what takes you to heaven. And what takes us to heaven is none other than the word of God. Than obedience to the word of God. That's what Jesus says. The Bible tells us, the word of God tells us, Jesus says, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by Jesus. There's no other way to heaven except that you follow the Son of God. Except that you follow the one that paid the price for our sin. So through him, you will receive forgiveness for your sin. There's no other way except through the cross. The cross of Jesus. Jesus said the following. He said, if anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself daily and take up his cross and follow me. If we want to follow Jesus, we're going to have to deny ourselves. We're going to have to do some serious denial. Because we human beings have been born into some serious sin. Because since Adam and Eve fall in the Garden of Eden, sin has entered the world and has been destroying the world, has been tearing this world apart. Where you see people are tearing each other apart because of the sin that is in them, moving in them, moving through them like wildfire and ready to destroy anybody that gets in this way. You see, Jesus is the way to heaven. That's why if you want to know how to enter heaven, this is what you need. You get a Bible, you read it. You read the Bible and then you follow it. And what the Bible tells you is what you do. And you will not fail. You will not fail. Jesus says, him who believe in me. See, if you believe in him, if you follow him, you obey him, he will raise you on the last day. You will not perish, but have everlasting life. There's nobody, nobody that put their faith in Jesus, that obey Jesus, that will miss heaven. They will all see heaven. Regardless of 
Whatever people say, whatever people think, it's not about what people think. Because no man is the judge on this earth. There's only one judge. The righteous judge. The one that never sinned. That is God Almighty. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. He is the righteous one. The Holy One of Israel. He is the one that in the end will determine who enters heaven and who goes to hell. And he has already told us the way to heaven and the way to hell. For us, we choose the way to heaven. We don't want no parts of that fire. I don't want no part of that fire. I don't want no part of that fire. No part of that lake of fire. I want nothing to do with it. And I want nobody that is listening to me in this message to have no part of that fire. You see? So I'm telling you, to enter heaven, this is it. The words of Jesus, the Bible. You read the New Testament, it gives you clear instructions on what to do. It's clear. Whatever you read there, that's what it is. You see? That's what it is. It's clear. You see? Nowadays, people read the Bible. I wonder even if uh, they read the Bible, but then they will put their faith more in a preacher, a man. Then they will put their faith in God, in the Word of God, the living Word. So that's why then they will receive sometimes false doctrine. Sometimes they will give them lies. They will feed them lies. They will feed them junk. You see? And they will take that junk and eat it. You see? They will eat that junk and continue to eat that junk. And then yet the Bible is already telling you what the truth is. The Bible gives you good food, not junk. So when you eat of the word of the Bible, you eat that good food. That food will never perish. See? That food that is the word of God will never perish. Once you eat it, you live forever. But that junk that sometimes you get from people preaching wrong Bible. When I say wrong Bible, it means like it's not that they're preaching the wrong Bible. Because they, they preach the wrong word. They take Bible. Sometimes they twist it. Or sometimes they preach something. Make you think it's Bible, but it's not even Bible. You see? And then, or they put something, and then because they have a mic and they have a tie with a suit, and then you think they're a man of God. You see, that'll make you a man of God. You see, carrying the name of a pastor, prophet, whatever, pastor, whatever, evangelist, whatever title, does not make you a man of God. You know, does not give you the, the, the authority, you know, to, to, to uh, uh, over the people. You see, in the end, is the word that is the authority. The word of God is the authority. That's what Jesus says. And when it's all said and done, 